So hi, welcome to another PH video. This video series is regarding the Center for Internet Security, and we're gonna be discussing the CIS Controls version 7.1. Now, before I go forward, I have to present to you the legal copy pertaining to this channel. Um, the gist of it is pretty much like some of the material in this channel may contain what is considered to be hacking or computer security related content. And we have to tell you to please not use any of it in a malicious manner and be aware of what uh, network you are using these tools against. Although this video in this case does not contain any of this um, information, it is just for you to know. Um, we are not, uh, we do uh, welcome your comments and we love to read the comments and read your recommendations and learn from them, but we are not responsible or do we agree with um, anybody's uh, comments they might post or disagree with any comments they might post. It is not, you know, our point to do that. This channel is purely for educational purposes and to learn. Um, we do not warranty any of the information we provide. It, absolutely will not be a hundred percent covering that topic um, we will do our best to be accurate and present information in a, in a accurate and, and uh, useful manner but you should keep this in mind that um, this is an educational channel and not a design for you to pass any type of um, certification exam um, a lot of the things in this channel are going to be the presenters opinion so with that out of the way let's get started so the CIS control matrix is made up of 20 modules. Modules 1 through 6 are referred to as the basic set. Modules 7 through 16 are foundational and 17 through 20 are organizational. There will be a separate video going over each of the modules in and of itself. <coughs> but let's look at what they were, what's in each module. So basic modules 1 through 6 are made up by inventory controls for hardware assets inventory controls for software assets, continuous vulnerability management, controlled use of administrative privileges, secure configuration for hardware and software on mobile devices, laptops, workstations, and servers, maintenance, monitoring, and analysis of audit logs. This makes up the basic module set, and we will be posting videos going into more detail on each of these modules. The foundational modules, 7 through 16, are made up of email and web browser protections, malware defenses, limitation control of network ports, protocols, and services, data recovery capabilities, Secure configuration for network devices such as firewalls, routers, and switches. Boundary defense. Data protection. Controlled access based on need to know. Wireless access controls. And account monitoring and control. The final module is called organizational and it covers 17 through 20, including implement a security awareness and training program, application software security, incident management, incident response and management, penetration tests, and red team exercises. And again, future videos will be posted going into much more detail in each of these subsections. Now, one of the concepts that needs to be understood about the whole CIS model, and really this applies to all security, is what we call defense in depth. Um, some people refer to it as the onion because it has kind of an onion-like approach to it. And essentially, we start with the concept that your organization has information, either proprietary or information that is on a day-to-day -day basis, but information nonetheless. Now, we need to let people access the information. Now, the most ideal model, which does not exist, but it would be nice if it did, would be that people could just access the information. You could just walk up and get your information. However, due to the fact that we have people with less than uh, ideal intent involved, this, this really can't apply. So we have to put in things to protect the information, things like education and training, backups for the information, encryption, and then we have systems. Now systems are things that are going to interact with that information.
In those areas, we might have things like host, what's called intrusion detection systems, patches and updates to said systems, be it Windows, Linux, or Macintosh, or Apple. And then we have networks, things that connect our systems together. Here we might have proxy servers, network intrusion detection systems, network intrusion prevention systems, firewalls, redundancy between our systems, monitoring of the systems, access controls, security planning for incident response, disaster recovery, and business continuity. And of course we have the internet, which is the outer layer of our defense in depth model. And this is where our policies and laws might come into play. And obviously the key concept is we want to make sure that authorized personnel have access to the information. So security is a business enabler and not a business preventer. You also notice this is a big orange arrow and that is done on purpose to kind of represent the concept that we want to make sure that we have all this security implemented and through these videos we're going to co cover the CIS framework of implementing security, but we also want to make sure that we have a fast track and express lane so authorized people can get to that information quickly and easily and not be hampered by any type of security measures in place. And then finally, we wrap it all up by introducing the concept of you want to have a balance between people and technology. So on the left, we have a lot of technology uh, based security mechanisms. On the right, we have people based security um, mechanisms and control. So we're going to go over again, f future videos will go over more detail about all these, but this is just the introduction. Now, CIS also has what they call the five critical tenets of CIS controls. The first one is offense informs defense. What they mean by this is they say use the knowledge gathered from previous attacks to build an actionable lessons learned database. Include only controls which are in scope of stopping and preventing the documented attack. What this means is that any program you do, any, I personally have been a security contractor for decades. Um, what this means is that the first thing you want to do is try and look at their incident history um, and incidents being defined as unexpected interruptions in services. Look for when things went wrong. Servers weren't available, attacks were successful, data was breached and patch those, you know, do a root cause, patch those things first. So create an offensive, you know, or you want to develop in your organization an offensive mentality. You don't want to sit there and wait for somebody to attack your network. You want to be offensively prepared for attacks and to be able to counter them. Prioritization is the second one, and this really has to do with also the fact that organizations don't have unlimited resources and funds. You have limited manpower, you have limited money, you want to prioritize what will give the biggest bang and results for the investment of people, money, and time. This may not always be what you think it is, but you definitely want to go with that. Now, with this said, a uh, uh, hole, which a lot of organizations fall into, is the new shiny tool, new shiny software, they saw a presentation in a security conference of software ABC, and it just looks like it's going to be the holy grail and solve all their problems. I can tell you right now that's not true. There is no single solution. There is no magic software. There is no magic appliance that you can put on your network, and it's suddenly going to fix everything. And this is because all organizations are different. All networks are different. All organizations have different um, goals and of business and uh, different business strategies. So you have to really look at your organization. From my experience, what I tell organizations I contract for is always start with where you are. And I tell we have an expression. Uh, one of the main concepts in ITIL is figure out where you are now first. Really have a good strong understanding of your existing resources and capabilities. Don't go rushing out to buy the latest and greatest anything until you know what you have now. Um, because any money you spend is money spent. Did you need to spend that money? Did you gain a return on investment on it? 
Number three is very important for any organization, and often I have found in my experience is overlooked and sometimes overused and sometimes improperly used. Measurements and metrics, what you're measuring. We're going to discuss this in a lot more detail in future videos, but one thing you can do right now in your organization is look at what metrics you're collecting and ask yourself, is this actionable data I'm attaining? Is, can I do anything with this measurement? So for example, if I tell you we stopped a thousand viruses from entering the network, okay what can you do with that really not a heck of a lot right if I just told you the statement we stopped a thousand viruses hitting the network great but what if I add to that but 10,000 viruses got into the network well that's not very good so you have to look at what are you measuring why are you measuring what is the actionable intelligence I remember many years ago I had a sea level um, on a project I was redesigning metrics for and what the driving the driving thing for the redesign was the sea levels were going so what you know we're getting all these metrics but we can't do anything with them so you really want to look at it from that perspective continuous diagnostics and mitigation what we're talking about here is that just because you put in some appliance or some tool or you have an intrusion prevention or intrusion detection system, whatever it might be, all of these tools have to be tuned and like an instrument, like a musical instrument, if you will, they have to be retuned. You can't put in an intrusion prevention system, an intrusion detection system, a SIM, and that's it and walk away and just have it spit out data you have to make sure it's working correctly. You have to tune it. Um, I'm a huge proponent of what's called network baselining. Get a good protocol analyzer. In the past, I've used, I'm not gonna mention name, but I've used a product that I was very happy with. You know, get on a laptop, make sure you've got a promiscuous NIC on it, which means that it can look at all the data, not just data being assigned to it, and baseline the network and create trending charts. Hey, January, this is what our network looks like. February, this is what our network looks like. And if you can start collecting this data for many, many years, it can actually create some very good intelligence because what you can do is have your network data for January, February, whatever month it might be, and then you can have notes on the bottom of what happened during that month, what major event occurred. Well, we released a new product. Well, we switched our servers. Well, we upgraded our bandwidth. We added another firewall. Whatever it might be, this is good information, really easy to collect and very useful. Number five, automation. I am the first person probably to tell you automation. I, I will be the first person to tell you automation is awesome. I love automation. I think it's great. The one caveat I tell everyone and every organization I've contracted for and work for is that automation is great, but it also automate making mistakes. If it's not implemented correctly, you're just going to make mistakes even faster. So automation, awesome. We're going to, again, we're going to discuss this in more detail in f future videos, but keep that in mind. Just because something's automated doesn't mean it's being automated correctly. So again, monitor, measure, check it out. Where to start? This is where I'm going to differ and I'm going to throw in, this is my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the opinion of the, the, the Centers for Information Security. It is not anyone else's opinion but my own. And this is where I kind of disagree with the CIS framework. But I'm going to throw it out there. CIS essentially says there's implementation group one, small to mid-sized companies. Implementation, implementation group two is your larger organization. And implementation group three will be like your enterprise, your much larger organization. Where I differ is that CIS essentially says, well, if you're in group one, you need to do these sets of guidance, number two, this, number three, this. The reason I defer with this is that today we have startups, we have small organizations that are starting up and they can be using what's called PII, which is personal identifiable information. They might even have HIPAA, healthcare information. They might have um, 
all sorts of regulatory data they're dealing with. They might be a, a company of a dozen people, but they're still dealing with very sensitive regulatory data. So I'm going to differ in my presentation, and I'm going to actually remove this element from the CIS framework. I'm not going to tell you if you're in group one, do this. If you're in group two, do this. If you're in group three, you should be doing this. I'm going to present all of these controls and all of these ideas as a universal. Look at your organization. You decide what you have and what works and doesn't work for you. So I don't want you to think about it from um, the size of the organization. In closing, please like and share this video. Subscribe if you like. Click on the little notification button if you're interested. We welcome comments and we welcome questions. Our email is right here at the bottom, contact phvideoyoutube.com. And our Patreon is also available if you'd like to donate um, to keep this channel running. We will make every effort to post one video per week. Um, I would like to thank you. And, and that's it. Have a great day, everybody.